My name's Jamie Baker, and I'm from the Horn Development Association, HDA, which is a project in Cardiff that works with local communities, and in this case, working with heritage, the history of black and minority people in Cardiff, focusing on the 1919 race riots, which we call the Year of Revolt, Hopefully you'll grasp that as we go forward. We're funded by the Heritage Fund in Wales. Up to now, we've developed a number of projects. We've managed to create databases, and we're glad to share those databases where it will advance knowledge and help people undertaking their own family research. Those databases are, number one, 1,700 Somali and Yemeni seamen that served on the UK Merchant Navy. 1918 to 21. 50% of those have pictures. Number two, every Welsh-born or Welsh-based seaman that died in World War II on the UK Merchant Navy. Three, every Caribbean-born seaman that died on the UK Merchant Navy in World War II. And number four, every Arab seaman. That's from the Gulf of Aden. So Yemeni, Yemen, Djibouti, Somalia, etc., as we now see them, that died on the UK Merchant Navy in World War II. Now, we're going to be undertaking some work, which is part of nine months' funding from the Heritage Fund, focusing on the race riots in 1919 in Wales. But to understand them, we believe you've got to link them to UK and worldwide events. The project will be number one to try and show the full context of the events in Wales, UK and worldwide. Two, to train volunteers. This is always central to what we do. Three, enable local communities to tell their stories about how the families were affected by the events. Four, tell the story in as available and approachable a way as possible using podcasts, YouTube channel and People's Collection, Wales, Facebook, and our own website. Five, the podcast will be weekly, and our hope is that this will enable us to interview people from all over the world. The intention is to show the global context. And six, never easy, involve education. Now, the race riots in the UK started in January in 1919 in Brumelaw Street, Glasgow, outside the signing on office where merchant seamen signed on to get a ship and in february it was in south shields that largely involved yemeni and somali merchant seamen who were the victims in march it was a brief fracas in salford in england in april it was east london where the chinese were the major victims of the attacks 5th of june It was Liverpool in England where we had eight days of attacks against black people by a white by white mob. And all of these riots were white mobs attacking black and minority people. In Liverpool, the most notable for many people was the event of Charles Wooden being pursued by a crowd of thousands, beaten and thrown into the River Mersey to drown. Sixth of June was when it started in Wales, in Newport. And then on the 11th of June, it had started in Barry and Cardiff. Now, the role of the press in 1919 was central. There was no radio. That was 1926. It started the BBC or TV. The BBC started in 1936. And the press set their position on what was happening in Wales. The riots in Barry, according to the press, started because, quote, the black way laid him, Fred Longman seized him by the throat, pinned him against the wall and stabbed him under the heart. In Newport, the riot started because, quote, a coloured man accosted a white woman and a soldier intervened. The Cardiff riots were said to have started because, quote, blacks in a superior number set upon a lone white man, unquote. So the tone was set. Blacks are the aggressors, and the child's game of whispers begins to be followed by exaggeration. Now, a constant theme during this period and previously and also right up until the middle of the uh, period after the Second World War was sex. 
and protection of the white race was always part of the mob's chants and justifications during 1919. This is a quote from the Chief Constable of Cardiff at the time, which may say much more about him than it does about the actual context, but nonetheless, white flannels are more revealing than corduroys and make black men more attractive to white girls, Cardiff girls, who should not be allowed to admire such beasts. This was the sight of black men playing cricket in a church league. However, there was nothing light-hearted about the quotes that were also in the press. The chief constable again The coloured seamen who live in our midst are not imbued with our moral code and have not assimilated our conventions. They come into contact with the female sex of the white race and their progeny are half-caste with the vicious hereditary taint of their parents. A theme picked up by the Western Mail newspaper. The sex problem, black men with white women, which obtrudes upon the matter is one with which the legislative is unlikely to interfere. Such consorting is ill-assorting. It exhibits either a depravity or a squalid infatuation. It is repugnant to our finer instincts in which pride of race occupies a just and inevitable place. The only answer at the time from the British government of Prime Minister David Lloyd George and his minister, Winston Churchill, was repatriation of the black and other races back to their countries of origin. And they offered them, the repatriates, two to five pound, plus five pound when they landed back home. However, according to those who were repatriated and sailed on the SS Orca, they never received the money. An estimated 3,000 were repatriated from the UK, including 200 from Cardiff, who were put on a boat in Plymouth. According to some writers and academics, the riots were caused by unemployment and poverty. Well, that may be so in their eyes, but how does that explain the over-brutalisation of white women who were stripped and beaten by the mob if it was discovered they were in any kind of relationship with a black man? the lies published by the press. The fact that the reason the number of black and minority people had increased in Cardiff, etc., was because Britain had asked them to come as they were needed during the war. The only solution offered, as I've said, was repatriation. Brutal events across the world that year cannot be explained by unemployment and poverty, such as the Amritsa massacre in the Punjab in India legislation to stop freedom of expression in India, and the wave of 37 riots, racial attacks and lynchings being part of them, across America, known as the Red Summer. But in a state of political unrest nationally in the UK, what happened in places where there were no black or other minorities to blame? Well, there was still violence. And politicians were blamed. For example, Luton Town Hall was burnt down in July 1919. Let's move forward very briefly. Can it happen again? First, there is a need for the ammunition, then the confidence that, quote, you are on the side of the right, and then there is the mob. Well, the UK has had a referendum to decide whether it would be part of the European Union or it would be totally independent. And the newspaper headlines that as we considered whether to leave Europe, well, some of those have been the subject of press complaints investigations. And since 2015-16, when these press were covering and encouraging people to leave Europe, there has been a 10% increase in racial discrimination, according to surveys, and a significant rise in all types of hate crime, from attacks on disabled people through to attacks on lesbian, gay and trans people. Just to quote some headlines. The Sun, November 2015. One in five British Muslims have sympathy for jihadis. The Daily Express, July 2016. Migrant crisis, sort it now. New Home Secretary urged to get grip on borders. The Daily Star, Sunday, 4th of September 2016. One of the most infamous murderers in Britain's history, the Yorkshire Ripper, 
Sutcliffe, his surname was, was mentioned. Yorkshire Ripper turns to Islam. Muslims protect Sutcliffe in jail. The Daily Express, 3rd of August 2016. EU's migrant crisis is colossal. The Express website, 23rd of May 2016. The National Health Service will be £10 billion in the red in three years' time, creaking under weight of migrants. Daily Express, 16th of May 2016. Soaring cost of teaching migrant children, £3 billion bill. Another reason to quit EU. The Daily Express, 12th of November 2015, 75% of new jobs go to EU migrants in one year. Mail Online, report shows the NHS is nearly at breaking point as massive influx of EU migrants forces doctors to take on 1.5 million extra patients in just three years. And migrants spark housing crisis. Now, Many of those comments were investigated by the Press Complaints Authority and some were found to be based upon no facts at all and some were found to be based upon facts that actually didn't say what the paper said. Retractions in the British press are never made on the front page. So page 7, page 8, etc., you would see an apology sometime later. Now, one of the questions we've been asked is, why does forgotten history need to be told? This is a quote from Martin Neimuller that I was taught when I was a child. First they came for the communists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me, Pastor Martin Neimuller. And as Edmund Burke said, those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. Now, many stories are forgotten by history and ignored in our classrooms. Hopefully, by telling this story in more detail over eight or nine months, we can show the global picture of the First World War and the Allies' fear of revolution, how that affected non-white people globally, and how that affected Wales. It is important to understand fear of communism and Bolshevik uprising and the trade unions, and for the first time, a potential global perspective amongst ordinary people particularly those who were working people and soldiers, merchant navy, etc., who were returning from war, was a common concern across all of the democratic nations. My name is Jamie Baker. I represent HDA Cardiff, and this was recorded in June 2019, which is the anniversary month of the riots in Wales. We will follow this with a number of related stories which will be more detailed about individual events and individual places. Hopefully, you'll contact us if there is a part of this story you can contribute to. Thank you.